Um, I'll hand over now to my colleague, Angela, who will be introducing the next speaker. Over to you, Ange. We're just having one, uh, one moment here. We'll have Angela up in a second. Oh, good. Hey everyone, my name is Angela and I'll be talking on... Hello everyone. Thanks again, Rosh. I'm Angela Etienne Web, but before I introduce the next speaker, can we kindly go on the chat box on Zoom and rename ourselves to maybe the name of the country, your region. An example of this will be placed on the chat box. So kindly go there. So introducing the next speaker, I'll, he will be telling you on land management, community development, and open technology. So let's all welcome Solomon Njogu from GLT and that's Global Land Tool Network. Over to you, Solomon. We're having a short Mr. Solomon. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so, going to make a presentation. Uh, I hope it's coming through. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a long one and I hope I'll not be boring. And thank you very much to the Young Surveyor team for the wonderful facilitation. I think uh, I like the way you've been communicating and updating us ever all the way. So um, Solomon from GLTN, just going to give a small background on myself. So I'm a geomatic surveyor uh, by profession. Uh, so I also uh, have done master's degree in land management and land tenure from Technical University of Munich. Uh, specialized ministry on the mapping tools, uh, use of positioning system, mobile computing and all that as a developer, but also on, at the user level. Uh, but I've also been working with TLTN for a couple of years as a technical officer around STDM, uh, but now mostly working around land administration as a solution at country. Uh, so in this presentation, I uh, is going to give three perspectives is on the land management, uh, community development and the tools. So I just want to give you an overview of the global land issues that we are all struggling with, you know, as part of um, survey work. We have to address this because our, our work is the foundation that really provides a sustainable way of addressing this. So allow me to introduce a bit of background on this. Uh, and uh, mostly it's all about cadastre and it's all about how do we deliver tenant security uh, in a, an affordable way and in a way that uh, is sustainable. So we only know the background that around 30 percent uh, of cadastral coverage now um, in most countries is only around 30 percent. So we still have the question of what happened to the other 70 percent that are not registered. The big question for us as surveyors uh, and again, we have indication that women are really affected with almost like 3% who have actually uh, been able to step up the lander uh, of tenant security. So how do we really improve this? And then dealing with the affordability issues, like how do we make system more, you know, attainable in a country and they can be used without having to rely on very expensive and complex technologies that we really take time to establish. So with this background of issues and, uh, you know, in global challenges, how really do we uh, provide uh, the, uh, the tenant security to all uh, in a 
I would say in a sustainable way, but also uh, something that uh, we ourselves can deliver effectively and at least cost. So um, building on to that background, uh, it's also important to know that uh, the global, globally that world is urbanizing, uh, most of the people are moving to the urban settlement and because of the remittent opportunity, you find most of these people are really finding their, you know, settling in the informal areas where there is no services, no infrastructure, uh, because obviously uh, the spatial planning, urban planning or blood management issues are not well addressed. So how to really provide solution to this as surveyors? So population in the slums have to grapple with many challenges as well. Uh, there is issue of climate and disaster. And this is uh, becoming a great occurrence. And uh, yeah, it's all related to the issue of land uh, and how can we really deal with these issues. So with that background, let me introduce a bit of frameworks around land management, land management and what GLTN is basing itself around. So I may not have provided the introduction of uh, GLTN, but uh, GLTN is a secretary of many partners globally in the academic, in the government department, you know, professionals and individuals who are really driven to provide solution in land. And so the background of GLTN is to work around providing solutions, whether it's tools, whether it's frameworks, whether it's guidelines on how can we really tackle the, the issue of land question sustainably and effectively. And so through this, we have developed a number of approaches. One of them is the continuum of land rights that is providing a different way of thinking around how to become inclusive. We are more responsive to the gender issues and also uh, placing the fit for purpose approach uh, when you're looking at the land policy, uh, land management decision in country. And so this is all supported by the global frameworks. We have the SDGs, we have the new urban agenda, uh, human rights, and then we also have the VGGT, the voluntary guidelines. So there are a number of frameworks that are supporting what GROTM is doing. And so with this one, how does it really help us move forward the, the whole agenda of you know, improving land tenant security? So again, uh, it's also important to look at element of technology and this is part of the core work of GLTN. We're also developing tools and the way these tools are built is looking at what the world is providing. What is the technology direction? We already know that the future of land administration is heavily dependent on the use of technology because it's going to make system more effective, more efficiency, and the processes are going to be implemented more uh, in a reliable way. So. Uh, GLTN approach technology, or rather the way we are uh, embedded technology in the development is use of these new tools, uh, satellite uh, imagery, uh, borrowing from the use of uh, positioning technology and all that. Then how do we make the information more transparent and reachable to the citizen? Uh, so the issue of transparency, accountability, and also integration with the existing tools around land information systems so that the system are not localized, but they can be used um, across the organization. Um, again, uh, making the system so affordable using free and open source tools. Uh, and again, uh, how do we secure the data? So we're also thinking about the use of cloud and uh, for the sake of interoperability and working with the different standard and different tools, so it's very important to look at what um, is the direction around standard. So we have RADM, we have open OGC, all that. So uh, STDM, all other, the way uh, GLTN is building the tool like STDM is borrowing from these concepts, which are really informing what should be the direction for future. And I'm happy most of the people have already interacted with some of these tools like STDM. So it becomes easier to mention this in the presentation. So, um, yes, I've mentioned on the tools for GLTN, but what is really the background? Why are we developing these tools? So the reason is to answer the question, how do we make land administration sustainable, affordable, and more you know, participatory for the people to really benefit? 
So we're basing ourselves on the, uh, this approach of fit for purpose, which is looking at the three aspects of special, institutional, and legal framework. So how can we re-engineer ourselves, our tools, our technology, uh, even in the processes that the tools are more fit for, for the purpose of what we need to do at country. So that's being our background. Now introduce more into the aspect of the social tenant domain model. Um, so STDM is more a, a participatory tool and you look at it in three aspects of the concept uh, of a model and uh, as an information tool. Why a concept is because it's providing a new way of thinking how you can represent people to land relationship. Uh, and this is, doesn't have to, bend, to depend on the level of formality or legal requirement or the technical accuracy. How can we really innovate around that? And sometimes we call this the social perception of land tenure. And so when you look at STDM as a model, then you're looking at it as being a specialization of the properly accepted standard of land administration domain model. That, what that means is you can principally use STDM to context but again, be able to support the agenda of land administration because then it's being based on the global standard uh, of RADM. And so uh, the other aspect of STDM as an information tool, then it provides you that interface for inter interrogating the data that you collect with the people uh, to be able to respond to certain issues, you know, even diagonalize some of the challenges that the community may be uh, not perceiving uh, per se, but the data can answer to some of those questions community may have. So that's a, a conceptual approach. And then, um, so it's represented in a pictorial way that you can relate to uh, the model itself. That is, the, we're looking at the party being, uh, or rather having a relationship with, that is called the social channel relationship to a particular spatial unit. And you see these terminologies are changing because we don't want to limit ourselves to the person to the land. So then you have the flexibility to look at person in different way. It can be a party, it can be a group, it can be you know um, a society, it can be a settlement, it can be a local government, and that becomes your party and the relationship can vary. Uh, so it doesn't have to be the legally binding uh, that's acceptable, uh, at the national level, it can be that that's really acceptable at the customary level, uh, informal settlement, the way people perceive their relationship to land. So that can be the either access, use, you know, and uh, hunting rights, grazing, all that. It could be very, uh, uh, I would say, social uh, perception rather than the legal way of looking at things. And so the spatial unit is also very flexible. You can either consider it as a land property, uh, it can be a structure, natural resource, a forest, or a lake, um, something like that. So, and, and this relationship can be supported by many ways, uh, either through uh, taking photographs, you know, taking a um, uh, sketch for the area, for the settlement, or maybe recording, maybe a local leader or traditional authority speaking about the history of the area and how people really access the service of um, certain utility. So it can be very flexible. That's the concept of STDM. Now moving forward uh, to looking at STDM as a tool, um, and I'm happy people have interacted with this, young surveyors have interacted with this. This becomes easier to relate. Uh, so it's a way of how you answer to the concept and to the model and bring that into an information tool. And so some of the key areas to we are focused on when developing STDM as a tool is to make it flexible and low cost that can represent the relationship of people they have to the land in a very easy way. It's also providing evidence-based information to facilitate land channel uh, security. Uh, it's also based on open source uh, software. This is QGIS uh, for the GIS framework. Postgre for the database and easily be combined with other tools. And it's also easy to use and easily customizable to fit a specific context. Um, yeah, so I mentioned the way STDM is being used is very flexible. So maybe I would just like to highlight that uh, the flexibility here is in three aspects. 
as the customization of the tool um, and the perception of the people, the way they perceive STDM. And even now we are seeing people changing the use of STDM to locally suited name that we can relate it better uh, in terms of, you know, when they talk of technology, they give it a localized name so that people are able to really uh, associate themselves to the processes. And then the other way is how STDM becoming inclusive to cover a wide array of issues. So like here we can see we are able to capture issues of women and youth, land use, socioeconomic, uh, housing, conflict. So you can bring uh, multiple data sets into STDM and this information, uh, normally the current uh, framework of land administration tools doesn't provide you that flexible way of looking at things. So uh, you can have uh, different objective, either tenant security and seeing issues of on gaps in policy and institutions through the data that you're collecting. And that's uh, one of the innovative aspect of STDM, which is really uh, providing uh, a lot of interest or creating a lot of interest at country. So uh, again, now when we're looking at how we are developing this at the a community level, uh, again, is a technology, but you have to bring it in a very uh, simplistic way uh, so that you know people can always relate to the technology. Uh, so application of open standards, um, this is uh, promoting compatibility and integration with other systems, and then reuse and improve. So we are building upon what we've learned um, and you know customizing uh, and embedding new technology, new tools that really makes the system so it's learning by doing, uh, again, making the information speak to the issues. So that information is power. And then collaboration aspect among the different uh, actors or stakeholders at the ground. So you have um, a local authority, you have community, you have uh, uh, faith-based organization, CSO and all that. So these are some of the innovative aspects of technology that you're bringing to make it a bit more understandable and perceivable at the local level in addressing the issues that uh, relate to land standard. And so specifically speaking on STDM uh, at the user level, what are the critical elements that you have made that this tool can be you know, used at the very local level by the communities? So uh, one of them is making it easier to configure uh, that means you don't need to have technical skill, you don't have to be a programmer, you don't have to be an IT person to configure with a one or two days training, you can configure STDM and get that into use. Uh, again, uh, I've seen uh, use of mobile technology uh, to collect data. So this is something that's also embedded in STDM now. Um, then you can also customize your reports and I'll show you a couple of slides that people are able to generate their own certificates, uh, generate uh, land tenure document that really uh, acceptable by authorities and they can be used uh, as a proof of ownership to land. Um, then the ability to reuse the settings, the configuration that you have made from one project to another, so that makes it uh, very easy to use and adapt in many contexts. So, uh, Again, speaking at the community level, how do we mobilize the tool application is using of this technology. So we have the questionnaire, which can be converted to GODK or combo uh, that is to support using the mobile. And then you can have participatory way uh, where people identify their plots or their land parcels on the imagery. And you can digitize that information and establish the database and then you can always use the handheld GPS to confirm that uh, actually what they are pointing on the map is. And that's where the relationship people have on the land become very strong. They can see it on the map and they can identify it with the GPS. And when you validate this information, it becomes very impactful to them. They relate the information and it speaks strongly to their perception of land. Tenor. And so when you bring that to STDM, you're able to now provide that interface uh, where you can really see the map and you can relate to the information. And over time, this can be managed, can be updated. When there is changes, you can change that information to reflect the changing transaction uh, at the local level. 
So um, just to mention a few or a couple of case studies that uh, really STDM is being used. So we have case of informal settlement in Kenya, Uganda, Zambia, Nepal, Philippines, and I'm sure this has been mentioned by young surveyors already. Uh, we have customary tenure case in Philippines, Laos, DLC, Uganda, uh, Zambia, uh, and uh, Central, uh, yeah, Caribbean. Then we have, in the case of natural resource management, you have Uganda and DLC in post crisis, uh, that is Iraq, Sudan, Palestine, Syria, Kenya, and Nepal. Uh, formal land administration, formal land registration processes that we have in DLC, Nepal, and Namibia. And the different, there are different stages of use. Some are still ongoing, some are at early stages, some are still waiting to be taken up. And so when you look at all these case studies, we are estimating around 1.5 million having been patented by the STDM tool. And this is an ongoing process. So, so I'm sure with the a strong engagement of young surveyor will be speaking of different uh, numbers in a couple of years to come. So maybe to summarize my presentation around this is, uh, what are the key emerging you know, outcomes at the country with these experiences of these tools, with the experiences from communities and the technology? So one of the thing is the uh, availability of settlement data. Um, this is being used by uh, authorities for planning. We have seen this in Uganda and Kenya. Uh, there is also a perception of tenant security as country to have improved because of the involvement, participatory processes and all that. Uh, we have also seen people reporting on reduced uh, eviction threats. That is mostly in Kenya. We have a case where there was eminent eviction, but this was with, um, or rather, uh, eliminated by you know, that process of STDM coming into play. Uh, and then uh, community development and provision of basic services. Uh, so people are able to use that information to interrogate what are the gaps and they're able to talk to authorities for service intervention. You've seen this in Uganda quite work very well. Uh, then engineering of business processes and digitization of workflows for land administration. Uh, we have this ongoing in DLC, we have this ongoing in Namibia, and I think somehow it's been done in Nepal. Neighborhood planning and also upgrading on former settlement. So this is also ongoing in Nairobi, uh, and then it has been done in Colombia and Philippines as well. And then uh, supporting the condition of customer retainer and improving of rights of smallholder farmers. It's also been done in Zambia, Uganda, and Laos. So these are some of the strong areas that are emerging, uh, and I'm sure there are many more I've not captured here. Uh, you see that also the way uh, the surveyors, the young surveyors speaking to the different impact you have when you're working there. And so you don't look at the technology as always as technical when you're a surveyor. You're also seeing ourselves becoming more social, more managerial when you're making these decisions or supporting the uh, work of land in that country. And that's why these, uh, some of these objectives are being realized. Uh, so it's very commendable for the work the team is also providing and the role of young surveyors coming in. So, um, so I may just speak now to what is becoming the future of these tools, or maybe because of this um, aspect of SDM being used as an inclusive tool to support a wide array of decisions. So we are seeing this becoming used as a planning tool uh, and a land management tool that's really impacting the various sector uh, in land. So, and these are some of the images that have been used in DLC. And I think we are also using it in a couple of other uh, contexts. So it's how the information being collected from STDM is providing that, um, you know, uh, broad aspect of looking at issues. Uh, and uh, I think based on, because of time, I'll stop at here. Uh, uh, yeah, so thank you very much. I hope I've not taken too much time. Back to you. Okay, that was nice, John. So educative, Solomon. So educative from Solomon. Well, 
me personally, I learned a lot of this session and would love your thoughts on it as well. Can you use the Mentimeter link on the chat box to let us know your thoughts? And if you have any questions of your solo, please indicate on the chat box or raise your hands and to be answered really shortly. While we're doing that, Cam Chanel, who is a core member of the team, will give us a brief tutorial on how to use the Mentimeter. On to you, Cam. Hi everybody, sorry. Um, so I've just shared the screen for our poll this, for this session. Please go have a look and this is your question and you can tell me some open source technology that you know that we can use for land management and community development. Um, if you could just, if you can't access it already, just go to www.menti.com. The link is already in your chat box and you have to type the code 4244909 and then just enter your answers. I think she's having some network difficulty. Hi, Cam. Okay, I think she's having some network difficulty. Let's exercise some patience to resolve very shortly. Thank you so much for your answers. See you again in the next session.